If you want to embellish something with some easy embroidery, then a shape sampler is a great way to do that. Today, I'll show you how to do it and how versatile that is. Welcome to Evita Studio. My name is Elizabeth and I help you make beautiful things with quilting, pojagi, and embroidery. A shape sampler is a great way to embellish something with embroidery. So this can be used to embellish ready-made items like bags or placemats. You can embellish um, quilts or other patchwork things that you're making, or you can just use them as embroideries to frame and display on the wall. So I have some samples here that I'm gonna show you. And basically what a shape sampler is, it's a shape and it's filled in with lines of embroidery stitches. So it's very versatile because you can pick whatever shape you want and you can fill it in with whatever stitches you want. So for shapes, you can just draw your own shapes. You can use simple shapes like even circles, squares, triangles. You can use custom shapes like letters. So if you want to do an initial or if you want to do the shape of your country, province, state, another recognizable shape like that. All of those things are great options. If you want patterns for specific shapes, I have some shape sampler patterns, so you can click the link below to see that. But here are some ideas to help get you started. This piece you can see is a simple flower shape and it is just filled in with running stitch. So this is pretty much as easy as embroidery can get, but it's still a fun little project. Then I have some other pieces. This is a little Christmas tree and it has just two stitches that are used, back stitch and feather stitch, and then it has a couple little embellishments on it. Then these two, the apple and the pumpkin, they also use back stitch and feather stitch and they have back stitch embellishments on them. So those are also fun um, little ideas. On this pumpkin, I've stitched the outline of it as well and filled in with lines of chain stitch. This star has just straight stitches. So it has back stitch and then straight stitches, but the variegated thread makes it look really fun. This is another fun option where I've really used the fabric in it. So the fabric has a pattern and then I've just done straight lines in a circle shape. So that is really easy, but also effective. Then with this heart, I've used different shades of pink to fill in so you can see the gradient effect from the stitches. And then on this Christmas tree, I've used a variety of stitches. I've used variegated thread. And so this one looks really complicated, but when you break it down, you can see it's actually quite simple. It's a triangle stitched with lines in a sampler. So in this tutorial, I'm gonna stitch a little Christmas ornament design. This is from my Christmas stitch sampler pattern. And in the pattern, there are different sizes available. So you can um, make it in whatever size you want. And I'm gonna be making a small one because I'm gonna be using it in a small fill in the blanks table runner. So in this table runner, I have flowers embroidered. I'm gonna be doing a Christmas version with a different Christmas shapes embroidered in it. So these squares finish at four inches square. So I'm gonna have my fabric bigger than four inches and do my embroidery and then trim it down and then do the piecing. Another option, if you didn't wanna do that, would be to assemble the whole top of the um, table runner, quilt, whatever you're making, and then come back and do the embroidery on it after the piece is already made. So both of those are good options. So let's get started stitching. I'm gonna be stitching this ornament from the Christmas Stitch Sampler pattern. And in the pattern, it comes in different sizes depending on what, uh, what you're making with it. And I'm gonna be doing the smallest size 
because that will fit in the four inch block that I'm doing. So I'll place my fabric over the pattern and then I'm gonna trace this with a water soluble uh, marker. So I'm gonna trace the outline here. And then I'm gonna put lines on it. Now there are lines on the pattern and those lines are a quarter inch apart on the small option, but I'm gonna do them a little bit further apart because I might wanna do some wider stitches. So I'll just start with a line in the middle. And I don't need this anymore. And then I'm going to do my lines 3 eighths of an inch apart instead of, um, instead of a quarter of an inch. And so you can feel free to vary these patterns. Um, if I was doing something large, I would probably do half inch spacing. And then I'll turn it around and I'll draw lines going in the other direction. If you've never used a water soluble marker before, then do a little test just to make sure that it is gonna come out of your um, fabric okay. But it's usually not a problem with quilting cotton. So that is what I'm gonna be using as my guide for stitching. So I'll put this in a little hoop. And I'm gonna be using embroidery floss. And you can decide um, how many strands of embroidery floss you wanna use for how um, thick you want your line to be. I'm gonna be using two strands for this because this is small. If I was doing a larger piece, I might use three strands. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna stitch right on the lines. And on the lines, it's gonna be um, a thin line. So I'm gonna alternate these back stitch and chain stitch just to get a straight line. So I will just start uh, randomly in the middle and I will do a back stitch. And I'll back stitch across this whole line. So now that back stitch is done, I'm gonna add chain stitch onto these lines and I'm gonna alternate chain stitch, back stitch, chain, back, chain, etc., and fill all the lines on the piece. So if you need to see tutorials for more details of how to do chain stitch and back stitch, you can check those tutorials, but I'm gonna fill in all the lines. Now that these lines have been stitched, we're gonna fill in the spaces in between the lines with wider stitches. Now you can use whatever kind of stitches you want, I'm going to follow the pattern in this and I'm going to use feather stitch and herringbone stitch. I'm going to start with feather stitch in this section at the bottom. And with these stitches, it's good if you can try and follow the line that's there just to get the space shape. So you can see how I followed this outer line to do the shape of the feather stitches. Now I'm going to do herringbone stitch in this space here. And I'm going to do the same thing at the ends. Line up the stitches as much as possible with those lines.
So I'm gonna continue along alternating feather stitch and herringbone in these spaces. Once all these wide spaces have been filled in with stitches, I'm just gonna stitch the top little trim with back stitch. You may want to stitch a border around the outline of your piece, but I'm not gonna bother doing that in this case. I'm just gonna stitch these in gold back stitch. So once all the stitching's done, we'll just remove that from the hoop. Now we just need to use water to erase those lines and then our stitching is complete. So once the lines have disappeared, we can see the ornament and this is gonna look great in the finished project. So have fun stitching with lots of different stitches. You can use this either as practice to learn new stitches or just a fun project using your favorite stitches and playing with different color combinations. The options for this are pretty unlimited. For more embroidery tutorials, ideas, and patterns, be sure to check out ebaystudio.com.